Okay, so you want to be able to use a slicer with the pivot by or group by function. I have my data here, which I am filtering using this slicer. In order to use a slicer with the pivot by function, you're going to have to utilize this argument here, filter array. And with filter array, you have to create a logical test that is applied to each row in your data. And if the logical test resolves to true, then that row will be included in your pivot by report. And if it returns false, it will be excluded from your pivot by report. Now you can return true or false, or you can return zero and one. Zero is equivalent to false, one is equivalent to true. Now to return that one and that zero, we're actually going to use the count a function. Now, if you haven't used the count a function before, it basically counts the number of cells within a range that contain a value, whether that value is text or numeric. Let's use the count a function on its own for the moment. I'm going to clear the filter that I've applied via my slicer, and I'm just going to count how many values are within a particular column within my data. So let's pick the product group column. So 15,865. If I apply a filter via my slicer, you can see that that number doesn't change. Count A basically ignores a filter. So does sum, so does min, so does max, so does average. Now to resolve that and still to use count A, I'm actually going to use the sub total function and I want to use count a so that's function number three comma and then I specify the range that I'm doing the counting in so again we'll say product group close the bracket and you can see I get 15,865 but now if I apply a filter it changes its count so we're going to have to use subtotal with count a if we want to do any sort of test based on the filter that we apply via a slicer now the filter argument has to return a true or false value for each row within your data. Now at the moment, our subtotal function is just performing an aggregate calculation. So the total count within our data. We don't want to do that. We want to do a count on each individual row. Return one if it meets the criteria, zero if it doesn't. Now, in order to get the subtotal and count a functions to perform a calculation on each individual row, we need to use a function called by row. So let's just look at by row on its own. So array is going to be our product group column. And with by row, we've got all these functions that we can use. And the one I'm going to use is count a. Close bracket, press enter. So what that's doing is returning a one for every single row within our data, because basically every row within our data contains a value in the product group column. Now, if I was to sum up those ones, you can see I'm getting 15,865. I just take off that currency format. And you can see that it's actually ignoring the filters. And that goes back to the same reason that this formula once ignored the filters it's because we're just using the count a function on its own and not using the subtotal function so what we need to do is not use count a as our function within by row but we need to use subtotal now the problem is subtotal doesn't appear anywhere in this list but if a function doesn't appear in this list what you do instead is you use lambda now with Lambda, we have to specify a parameter, which is kind of like a reference to the column in this instance that we want to do the calculation on. So I'm just going to call it TR for transaction, comma. And then I can use my subtotal function. And the function number is three for count A. And the reference is this named reference that we created here, TR. And don't forget that refers to the whole column that we're performing the calculation on, which is the product group column. So I need to close the bracket for Lambda and then for by row. If I press enter, it's now returning zeros and ones rather than 
all ones, which is what the count a function on its own did. So it's only returning one where this criteria has been met, Chichester. So if I change the branch, you can see that now both the subtotal function and my by row function, which is a sum of these ones, is returning the same value. Now we don't want to aggregate the count of the values. I'm just doing that to demonstrate that we now have a by row function that is sensitive to the filters that we're applying via our slicer. Now this formula is the exact formula that we need to put in our filter argument. So I'm gonna copy that, press enter, go up to my pivot by formula, and all I need to do is paste it into that filter array argument, control V, press enter, and now my pivot by formula recognizes the filters that I'm applying via this slicer. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.